So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to this addict, Eric. Come on up. Test, test, I'm gonna use the mic. Um, okay. So, um, this right here is a rope. About uh, six months ago, I walked into Home Depot, walked through the aisle, found this rope, this exact same rope. And I bought the rope and walked it out to the car in the bag and put it on my front seat. The purpose of the rope was to kill myself. I was 100% committed to suicide. Nothing was gonna change my mind. I had uh, eight years sober, a real small relapse, completely destroyed my life. Got my fourth DUI and it just went from there. You know, you guys know about this pain that I'm speaking of. I could not see anything or feel anything or do anything besides concentrate on the pain that was in my mind, in my spirit, my soul. Every morning that I woke up, it was the biggest fight of my life. Literally, like waking up took me like three hours. You know, dragging myself into the shower and you know, going so far away from what I was supposed to be doing. So, for some reason, and at this time I'll remind you, I'm 100% committed to suicide, 100%. So for some reason I, um, I went to this meeting, this men's meeting. You know, I, I think that I really wanted to tell somebody, but I didn't know how. And... Um, so I walked in the meeting and this guy was speaking about the brain, you know, and it was an amazing thing for me to hear. It's exactly the thing that I needed to hear. And I walked up to him after the meeting in like this really like crazy anxiety filled way and said, will you be my sponsor? And he said, um, Monday, 7.30, my house. So I went to his house at 7.30 and the rope is right next to me on, in the car, in the passenger seat, in the bag. I walked into his house, he sat me down right away, and he said, Eric, I think you've missed something. And I said, well, yeah, I've missed a lot of things, you know? And he said, uh, you cannot trust your mind. You cannot trust your mind. Do you understand that? I said, no, I don't understand that. You know, I, I did it at the time. And um, so I walked out of the meeting and, and I took that with me. You know, I cannot, un I cannot trust my mind. I took that with me and, you know, maybe I was 100% committed and now I'm 95%. But as you guys know, in addiction, every 5% is like 10 mountains. So I come off 100% to 95%. I'm feeling just amount, this amount of, of light. You know, it doesn't change the way that I wake up in the morning. It doesn't change the way that I'm feeling, but it just, there's something just a little bit different. So, but as I'm driving home and the rope's next to me, I'm looking at, you know, the trees and the bridge. I'm still looking for a place to hang myself. I had spent the last two weeks getting all my affairs in order and writing up a letter to, the, to my loved ones. And, um... So I got home a couple days later, and I realized that I had lost God completely. There was no God in my life, and maybe this had been going on for probably, I would guess, four to five months. And um, so I, I literally typed on Google, how do I find God right now? And about six places down, there was this guy named Moji. And like, I, I really was attracted to this guy, you know, um, by a higher power. And he um, just had this face of love. So I clicked start, and it was a, like a four or five minute video that taught me that moment how to find God. So here I found God literally four minutes after he told me how to find him. So now I'm, I'm, I'm at like 85%. 
but I would waver, right? I'm 85% to 100%, I'm doing it again, over and over and over and over and over, one million times a day. So in order to kill myself, I have to be able to drive. So I looked online for um, a DUI class and I found uh, New Beginnings. And um, I came in and I talked to Shay and um, you know, I kind of mentioned to Shay that I was in, in some pain and it was a really good conversation. And the conversation, the initial conversation with Shay took me down just a little bit more. And then it just happened that there was group that day. So I walked into the group and Fred was there. <laughs> and there were some other people there. And I'm awkward, man. And I'm full of anxiety. And who are these people? And what am I doing? All those questions that come to our mind. And um, so... Fred busts out a poem to start the meeting. And I'm just like, one, who is this guy? And two, the other side of my brain, the other side of my myself, the heart, said, this is amazing. You know, this guy, Fred, it took courage to write up a poem and read it to the, to the group. I mean, I've been to a lot of DUI classes. I have a lot of DUIs. And nobody has gone to that level of dedication to try to reach the students in the group. And so I said, I'm going to match Fred's courage. And every time I come in to NBRC in Fred's group, I'm going to share, no matter what. Now, I was that annoying guy. I know. I'm a, if you're in my group, you're like, who is this guy? And yes, I can be annoying. It's true. Um, but now I'm at, now I'm at, you know, what, 75? I have, in three weeks' time, gone from 100% killing myself to 75%. That's three weeks. And all I really did was meet with a sponsor on a regular basis every Monday at 7.30. He starts taking me through the book. Go to classes with Fred, listen to Moji, and then I started talking to Mary. And, you know, as Mary and I started talking, she told me something that will forever have changed my life. She not only told me, she taught me. And that is that, you know, I look at the pain of the mountain. I'll never get there. I'll never be successful. I'll never have a real girlfriend. I'll never have true love. I will never love myself. I'm a loser. Over and over, you guys know how it is. A million thoughts like this a minute. And um, she said, Eric, you know, you don't have to look and stand at the bottom of the mountain and think that you have to go to phase one, phase two, phase three. Now that's true for steps. We have to do our steps. But when you're looking at this mountain, you can say, move that mountain, God. Move that mountain. And, you know, that's, that's what I started to do. I started to trust myself. So I will, this isn't a speaker meeting because I've got a great presentation for you. But I will tell you that strategically, Mary has placed mind racks all over this building. I see that some of you guys have seen them, and some of you use them, and that's a miracle. See, for a while, I didn't use them, but I'm starting to use them. See, when I walk in, before I walk in the building, I take my mind off, and I put it in the rack that Mary leaves for us. And I try, when I'm in here, to work through my heart and not my mind. Because what did my sponsor say? I cannot trust my mind. So what I'm going to ask of you is we're going to play a little video. It's a little bit about Moji, my, my spiritual advisor. And so let's take our minds off and put it in the mind card and watch the video together. And then we'll have the announcement. I hurt myself today To see if I still feel I focus on the pain The only thing that's real We as consciousness, we are cooperating with this delusion somehow. 
you have so much power, all the power is with you, but we hand it to the mind, which tyrannizes your spirit, keeps you feeling divided, because this is how it rules. It is the supreme politician. Divide and rule, this is what it is. But then you see, but this is just an effect. I am the one seeing. Then your the mind is showing you objects. So look, this here. Uh, no, no, it's not this. No, what about this? No, it's not that. What about blank? No, it's not that. Yeah. So something knows it's not. It's not going to be anything that can be desired. It's not a feeling. It's not a. It's not a beautiful image. It's not anything that you can see or have seen before. You have never seen the self. You have never seen the self, not phenomenally. You are the self. I gave the example, like a knife can cut so many things, but it cannot cut itself, because it is one unit, one whole. Or the eyes can see so many things, but they can't see themselves. They can't do it, because it is one thing. You are the self. You cannot see yourself. You can only see from yourself. It was St. Francis, I think he says, no? What you are looking for is already where you are looking from. That's what I say. So nothing is wrong with you. Just we are paying attention to an effect uh, that is in the mind because we give the mind a lot of authority a lot of importance and so it appears as though the mind will one day cooperate but no, it won't the mind one day is going to give you a holiday look I've troubled you for so long I will stay here and look after the house you go away and have a holiday no, it's not going to happen you want a holiday from the mind you stay as yourself this is what happened yeah. so this thing I'm pointing out it is the recognition of the obvious. Blank means nothing. Now my mind is really angry. So what? So what? Let it be angry. What can it do? It can only do something if you keep on being mesmerized by it. Some people, I see them like, you know, like, don't upset my mind. Don't upset my mind. It's like, if he wakes up, fuck. <laughs> Something is, you're not so pulled off center by these effects. So, at the moment, what's happening is that there's a relationship with the mind, and it's almost as though the mind now has become like a separate entity. So that it says, if you do that, I'm going to punish you. Look, uh, oh, geez, oh, 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 oh. okay, okay, I won't go there, okay, I won't. Like this. So, <laughs> When it's like this, I say, oh no, let it do, let, let, let this body blow up. But uh, I am only staying here. Let it do whatever it's going to do. Because if you are going to fight the mind, you will not win. Don't get into a street fight with your mind, you will not win. Overcome it with the same way I pointed you. You are the weakness of it. It's like it doesn't want you to know that, because there lies your power, that you are the weakness of this mind. And the more you come into the recognition, I am observing that, it is what comes and goes, not me. I watch its effect coming and going. The mind cannot come and stay. Mind cannot come and stay. This is a mortal body, but an immortal being moves in it. This challenge of the human experience is to discover that I am that. Not believe only, but to know irrefutably, I am that. Then all your sorrows are over. All your depressions, fears, future, time, religion, all of this will not command your being. Hallelujah. This is all.
all this is happening. And I want to open these pages in the sunlight so you know and see and acknowledge hmm, that somehow we, we as consciousness, we are cooperating with this delusion somehow. You have so much power, all the power is with you, but we hand it to the mind, which tyrannizes your spirit keeps you feeling divided, because this is how it rules. It is the supreme politician. Divide and rule. This is what it is. Divide and rule. So you remain the undivided seer. You are the one who is aware of all of this thing. But no, to live under the tyranny of the mind, no. That was the conviction. Then I call you to that much courage in yourself. Because all the beings in the world somehow are under the influence of this conditioning, this fear, this fear, and this compromise. You say, you say yes and mean it. But it's important to have a kind of support also. This is what we try also to do when we have a retreat to give you a space and environment to encourage you that other beings are also on the same journey of looking into truth. And they are your family, actually. And in the Sangha, true Sangha, support each other. When you see someone is crashing a little bit down, then you can say, look, you know, come on, what are you doing? Don't you remember that this is just something? And you can brighten up again. So uh, it's important. And if you don't have that support sometimes, you know, then uh, the mind isolates you, then you're, it's like this, it can feel like that. consciousness, your Shiva being, same thing. This innocence has tremendous power. It is the greatest miracle that a human being born with so much challenges can rise like, like the lotus flower, isn't it? It grows in the pond, in the mud pond, but it remains all its life untouched. You know about those lotus, they say even if the rain falls heavily, and the waters rise, the lotus will still be always above the water. And this is the nature of the Spirit. I don't want to give you just some flowery feelings, but to show you what you will feel up against for a while, so that your realization is permanent and true, not fickle. So everything that's happened to you uh, bear in mind, it's happened before to other beings over the centuries, it's happened. And they have transcended. And if even one has done it, it shows that all can do it. Now it's your turn. Your sister, your brother, your mother is not here. You're here. Make use of this time. In my view, I don't see a higher purpose for the human instrument than to recognize this, this, this great understanding this great understanding of who we are. I don't see anything. Myself, I cannot say that I lived a boring life, but nothing can compare to having come to that recognition of the truth we are. Out of that truth, that love which I found, somehow the energy has come to continuously put in front of you, remind you, this, look, look, don't keep going there, look here. Spend a moment here. Give full attention to yourself just for this moment. Mind can only offer you a version, a portrait, a portrayal of this. But a portrait is not you. Find a way. Yes. 
something in you that says, I can do this. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. <laughs> so, you know, first, uh, I mean, this is the stuff that I listen to for hours every single night to stay sober. And also talking with my sponsor and talking with Mary and Chris and Shay and Tim and Fred and all of you guys in here have shown me the way as well. You know, so I, I'll pick up this rope one more time, but um, I'll tell you that uh, I, um, I'm, I, I changed this rope with a, with, a, with a different friend. And at the time, this was my friend. This was the delusion. This is not my friend. You know, Larry's my friend right here. So Larry rides in my back seat. So everywhere I go, I turn around and I see Larry and I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. You know? Um, and I just want to mention one more thing before we get to the announcement, is that like for my, uh, the, brief, the, the amount of sobriety that I had before I had some tools. So that was useful to me not committing suicide. But I'll tell you, I failed in, in, in two ways. And one was um, a higher power in God. And the second was that I never have learned how to really like myself, not love myself, even like myself. And we talk about this at the house that I live in, the sober living, and Mary's. And, um, you know, I'm not, where's my shirt that says sober? What's up? You know what I mean? Like, seriously, I got nothing like that. You know, like, I, I'm alive. There's people dying every single day, and I have no pride in my sobriety. Eric, um, want to come to the bar with us? Well, I'm on a cleanse. You know, the, the Los Angeles, like, high-end uh, juice cleanse? You know? It's a joke. What do you mean I'm on a cleanse? I'm on no juice cleanse. I can't afford a juice cleanse. I'm broke. It's a lie. I'm telling lies. And I understand that, you know, we have to protect our sobriety. That's not what I'm saying. I, I'm saying that I never learned how to be proud of my sobriety, and in turn, love myself. So um, there's a lot of great things in here, but today what we're doing is we are um, gonna do this. So New Beginnings Recovery um, Center and Mary's Hope is gonna launch Sober Olympics, okay? So Sober Olympics is gonna focus on three categories that we all are gonna participate in. Education, service, and health and wellness. So really quickly touching each one. Education. Like, education, there's so much. Seeking out God, reading a book, talking with others, going to get that degree you always wanted. Um, technical training. You know, also speaking out about the disease, going to a, a college or a high school. You know, we are going to have an education division and we're gonna send around books and ideas and stories and solutions. So education can really um, help us out. And ed we're full of education in this building. You know, we, we constantly are educating. Um, service, um, service speaks for itself. But the thing is, is we need everybody's idea. You know, if I say, hey, I've got an idea, let's go paint grandma's fence. Okay, that's great, that's great. I want more ideas. There's a hundred different things we can do, a hundred million in this, just in this community of Littleton, let alone the Denver greater area. So if you have a service idea, let's, let's go with it, you know? Let's put our minds together. Let's make this happen, and, and we are gonna make it happen. Um, health and wellness. You know, maybe I eat two burgers instead of three. You know, maybe I wake up in the morning and I actually have breakfast. Maybe I start to work on myself. Go for a walk, you know? If you see one of your roommates, at, at, you know, w uh, my, my house manager went for a four mile walk yesterday. I sat there on the computer. When he got back, I applauded him. W what did I do? I sat on the computer, you know? So starting today, I'm not gonna do that, you know? I'm gonna take steps to, to step up my game. Now guys, I just got, wanna give you this head fake. Do you think I really want to do this? The, the, I, the I, I don't want to do this, but I am my soul, my heart, God. We want to do this. 
because our recovery becomes strong. We beat it one day at a time through this. So our first event is going to be what we call Burning Man, and uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be awesome. It has to do with fears. We'll let you know more about that. But we have a big event planned, and, um, and this is my deflator partner over here. We come up with ideas, and he really says, okay, Eric, let's, let's, get, it, you know, let's get it right on. Let's get it on track here. Cause, but anyway, my point is, is that we're having an a event on uh, June 24th um, in the park, 5K walk. It's going to be awesome. We have the stage, the amphitheater. We're going to have a band. So we're all going to work towards that. 